This is my 2005 1500 that I picked up about two and a half years ago for a thousand dollars with a bad 4.3 v6 engine and I just now got around to swapping in a 5.3 LS. While there is a lot of information on the internet about LS engines, there's not a ton of information about swapping an LS into a vehicle that could have come from factory with an LS, namely the GMT 800s. So I thought I'd put this video together. It's kind of an overview of what you need to know if you want to do this. Because I wasn't originally going to record this video, I did put a clutch, pressure plate, and flywheel for a 4.8 V8 on the engine before I started recording. But that bolted up nicely to the NV3500 in this truck. And it was only when I got to engine mounts that I started having trouble finding information on parts. These are the engine mounts out of both trucks if you're looking at it from the front. So this is the driver's side, passenger side. This is the this is this truck that had the 4.3 two-wheel drive. And this was the 5.3 four-wheel drive both 2005 so as far as like looking at this as far as I can tell how this is how this is organized or how these work out is the 4.3 upper mount is different than the 5.3 upper mount so you can see like this distance is different this is wider it's set different on the plate so well we'll go this way like the 5.3 mount does not work with the 4.3 upper the 4.3 also has these adapter plates because the engine has three bolts and the mount has four bolts and these are different per side it's mirror imaged so they have these things on there to space the mounts out right so you have to have the right upper mounts for your engine and then lower mounts this is different this one seems to be the same between two and four wheel drive which i did not realize until i ordered one and it's exactly the same part as far as i can tell we'll see once i get it in but the other side definitely doesn't work and as far as i can tell the difference with this one which it's different two and four wheel drive but i think the reason for that is this is a rack and pinion steering and all the four wheel drives I've seen have a steering box here and it brings everything front. So like if they'd use the four wheel drive mount, it would bring it front into this steering shaft here. So what they have to do is bring it, bring their mounting point back. And it's, it's also spread out more and it's a slightly different angle. You can see the four-wheel drive mounts just a little bit differently here to clear this front differential. Shooting some fluid film on this thing, well, it's easy to get to. This stuff does wonders in preventing rust. You have to use the alternator and power steering pump bracket off of the 5.3. The 4.3 doesn't work. The bolt holes don't line up. It's the wrong angle. It's just not right. So this pump looks to be in better condition, at least from the outside. It's not as rusty and whatnot. So I want to use this pump on this bracket and I didn't break the lines so that I don't have to deal with oil running all over the place. But to take the pump off, you have to take the pulley off because the bolts are behind the pulley. So you need one of these power steering pump pulley puller things. So this goes together. This thing goes in the middle. Man, this is hard to do one-handed. And then you have this sleeve that goes over top. It holds the thing together. And then you can crank this down and pull it off. The way it works is there's a groove in the pulley right there. And these latch onto there. And then this thing pulls on the lip and yanks it off. There we go. Just like magic, it came off. And it seems like it's just a press fit on the shaft. Putting it back on, you just thread this installer tool in the shaft. The shaft is threaded in the center. Then you crank this thing down and it slides the pulley right on. I probably would recommend running a tap in it before you take the pulley off. It makes the bolt easier to thread in. I'm just doing it now kind of demonstrate, but 3 8 16 tap. You have to use the AC compressor off of the 5.3. The 4.3 compressor mounts a little bit differently 
I think the other, I think this side is the same, but this side, you can see on this one, is different. Got all the AC lines in. You do need the AC lines from a 5.3. The condenser, no, the dryer is also different. So on the 5.3, it comes out at this angle. On the 4.3, it comes out like back here. So it just doesn't work. Uh, I already said you need the compressor. Those lines are all different. Um, I got a kit that has all the seals for in these. So I replaced all those. And it has a filter that you unscrew this and can put a filter back in there. Just pull it out with the pliers and shove the new one in. The dryer did not come with this. You have to just, came with the O-ring, but you have to thread this off and put it on the new one. I don't know, some kind of a pressure sensor or something. The 5.3 was drive by wire. The 4.3 was drive by cable. So the truck was drive by cable. And it's really annoying to put a drive by wire pedal in there. And drive by cable is just better. So I got a drive by cable um, throttle body, I guess you call this. They're like 100 bucks on eBay. Um, so it had, it had this thing stuck in here. So apparently at some point they changed it, I guess because you got this whole conglomerate on the side here. So I guess this is a vacuum line or something. comes out the side of the intake manifold instead of the throttle body. So I pulled this out. This is like 10 millimeters in diameter. Um, 9.96 or 0.392 inches. I found a little rubber plug that fits in there. And since it's vacuum, I'm hoping that's good enough. But I guess we'll find out. I've been trying to sort out... I've been trying to sort out what I need here as far as electrical to get this thing working. Because I switched this to cable throttle because it was just going to be a pain in the cab. So the electronic throttle body had this connector. It came over here. It's just one connector for this. It just loops around in the main harness. And the cable throttle body has a throttle position sensor here, which is three wires, I believe. And this is a stepper motor to control your idle air. I think it's idle air control stepper motor. So working through this kind of one at a time to control the stepper motor here as this connector on the 4-3 harness. This is the 4-3 harness. There's the fuse panel. You come down here to the computer and then this would be coming over top the engine and this would come to your uh, stepper motor idle air control. So you got four wires here, a green with a black stripe, green with a white stripe, blue with a black stripe, and blue with a white stripe. And they go to pins 76 through 79 on your green connector. That's these right here. So I got this information off of lt1swap.com. He's got all kinds of stuff on there. That's where I printed this whole packet out from. But that's those four wires right here. We also need our throttle position sensor. It's this guy right here. And that's this other connector. These were tied together with a loom. And that's got black, gray, and dark blue. So the gray and the black go to the blue um, connector here. And the blue one goes to the green connector. So I'll have to trace those. I'm gonna have to pull these out of this harness and put them in this harness, and none of those pins are used in this harness. So I think I can leave the connector for the electronic throttle body in there, and then if anyone wants to put one back in for whatever reason, they can. They just have to flash the computer. GM seems to like their tape. So if you're doing this, not that that's a bad thing, it just makes it a bit of a pain to undo or change the harness. But if you're doing this, plan on spending a bit of time just with sticky hands unwrapping tape. Whatever Pagan throttle position sensor I have does not work with this plug, which is interesting because if I go on Rock Auto and look at the pictures of throttle position sensors, it looks like it should work with this plug. And this is some different connector. I was curious to know what all goes on inside of these fuse panels. So I decided to take 
the old one apart. This is out of a 2005 4.3. Um, so it's just these four pins um, that your blocks, do we have a block here? Yeah, that these blocks screw into are flared out a little bit at the end. And that's what holds it in. So you just take like a 3 8 drill bit and a drill press or something very carefully and drill the flare off. Don't get rid of too much plastic if you want to use it. Because if you drill these, like I could still put this back together. It just, the pin will not hold itself in. But once I screw that block down, the thing will all be still held together. But anyway, drill the blocks. Then you can drop these pins out. And then, then it all just kind of comes apart. Now I gotta figure out what happens next. I never did figure out quite what was going with this. My best guess is that this is bussing key power, uh, battery power and key power around. Um, but yeah, there's really not much reason to get in here and change anything. But yeah, that's how that works. There's another layer here that comes off, but um, I started breaking it when I tried to get it off, so I decided not to because this is still a usable fuse panel. So, there you go. I've just got this hooked up temporary with the Milwaukee battery here, but these pink and gray wires right here are the reverse light switch. So the pink wire is hot, it goes down to the switch and the transmission, and then when the switch is closed, it comes back hot on the gray wire and then goes out to the tail lights, or the reverse lights rather. So to check that, if I short these out here, you can see the tail lights come on. Back in the 4.3 harness here, this would have been going above the engine, then this part here would have gone down above the transmission. So here's your speed sensor that would have been plugged in at the back of the transmission. And then this is your reverse light switch that's a little bit further front. And you gotta be careful here because this looks like an orange and a yellow wire, right? No, it's actually pink and gray. The wire is that faded that it changes color. So pink wire is hot. Uh, gray wire switched, and on this one, on the green terminal block is this one. The light green and black is the low signal, and the purple and white is the high signal, going to 20 and 21, respectively, on the green block. So I need to pull this out and stick that in the green block over here, and then this just has to get replaced with wherever the pink and gray wires go in that one, which is probably the big plug in the side of the transmission because it was a 4L60E. So I'm just gonna pop these out and let them hang here in case anybody wants to go back. It's probably not, probably nobody's ever going to go back to automatic transmission in this truck, but I may as well just leave it there. To repin these connectors, take a seven millimeter socket Wind that out of the way then you just kind of yank this thing like that. Then this blue thing prevents the connectors from coming out. So you have to slide that out like that. Then it's these two we're after down here. So you have to push. There's a little peg here you push to the side. And then you can pull it out just like that. And the pink was on the bottom. So I lied actually. I'm just pulling this reverse light switch off of the 4.3 harness. And I traced these wires back and the gray one does in fact go over here. But the pink one actually comes over here. I think all the pinks are key power, so it really doesn't matter, but it's not that one, it's this one. If you're doing this, put these wires in before you put your engine in because it runs across the top here and down across the back. And there's some wires that split off there and go right to the back of the engine. There's a ground wire, I believe, and a couple other things. And you can't get it out to work on it. So if you put these in 
before your harness and your engine is all in, it'll make it a whole lot easier. I'm gonna leave that in because it was interesting, but turns out it's unnecessary. So that was a waste of time taking that harness apart. But anyway, I found out this gray wire over here is has continuity to here. So this pin on this connector, um, that's probably only relevant for a 4L60E. Um, and there's already a speed sensor there. So I just need to splice into this and I'm good to go. I don't have to actually run it the whole way back. So with the latch thingy on this side, the gray wire is this one and the pink wire is this one. The pink is voltage coming into the plug and the gray is voltage going out to the tail lights. Okay, we got those crimped on. Got my pigtail here. It's probably a little long, but I for surely did not want it too short. I used these uninsulated crimps. You can get them in whatever size you want and then put heat shrink over it. And if you put some electrical grease on the ends of the wire before you stick them in the crimp, it makes a really nice seal, really nice connection. Okay, that's all hooked up. Put a battery on again, and let's do sanity check. And it seems to work. I was to the point of plugging the O2 sensors in, but this is the plug in the harness, and this is the plug in the O2 sensor. So that's just a slight issue. So I ended up using the Y pipe off of the 5.3. The problem is the Y pipe that was on this was welded to the rest of the exhaust system. Somebody did the exhaust on this thing at one point, replaced this pipe, and just welded it to the Y pipe. So I cut this flange off of the other truck, made it all line up with the Y pipe, which was a huge pain, especially because this pipe is a little too big, so it didn't fit inside of this. It was supposed to slide inside of this, and then you can just weld around the outside and tweak it a little bit first. But I had to get it that it matches up perfectly with this, so I didn't have to weld a huge gap, but that's on. I need to rotate this because I had to tweak stuff. But this should, once I do that, this should be ready to go back in. That's kind of tight under here, but that's in now. Got everything fastened up. And my O2 sensors now plug in, so that's nice. The harness is wired up with the safety being the automatic transmissions park neutral safety selector so this wire um it's pin how does this work f across the top and 11 down goes to the automatic transmission we need this to go to pin 18 on the green connector on the computer so i'm gonna disconnect this wire and just leave it here and then i'm gonna pull the wire out of the old harness it is this one we'll get that switched over and then that should be all the necessary wiring done I discovered with these computer connectors um, if you're putting a wire I discovered with these computer connectors if you're putting a wire in a spot that didn't have one before it's got this little rubber thing covering the top and it doesn't seem like you can poke it out but you have to stick something in there an allen key or a pick to poke through it at least so that you can shove your wire in and when you're removing these it kind of latches like this latches it but there's also a ledge on the bottom side so you have to like pick it up it's going to be really hard to see and you also have to move the pin away from the center a little bit like if you just pick it up and try and shove it out it won't go out because it's still on the ledge on the main part of the connector, if that makes any sense. Got the computer back from Brandon, lt1swap.com. Go check him out. He charges like 75 bucks, I think, to reprogram these things. So let's get that in here. I got a battery in this thing and I've been mucking through how the lights work. I've been trying to do the six high mod without just using diodes in there because then everything turns on if you have the high beams on and you don't necessarily want that especially if you are using your fog lights to run a light bar or something so i thought maybe something in here was turning the fog lights and the low beams off but that's not the case because that's all that this is doing is connecting these two wires 
So then I started looking at the fog light switch. Well, I looked at this, and all this does is connects different wires. There's no logic in this thing. I took it apart. It's just, just connecting wires to turn lights on. So this is your fog lights and your cargo lamp. This truck doesn't have fog lights. It just has cargo lights. So this is pretty straightforward, just a latching push button. It just connects the outer two pins here that are used. And if the connector is this way, the first three pins from the bottom aren't used. And then it connects the next one with one, two up from that, if that made any sense. So I just stole... So I just stole the switch out of dad's truck. Uh, his truck has fog lights. And it's interesting, the fog light switch is just momentary. So it must do something on the computer or somehow latch a relay instead of just holding it on with the switch, which I think is so that if you use your truck and have the fog lights on, then the next time you use your truck, the fog lights don't just come on by default. You have to turn them on. So I was looking at the pin out here and so from the bottom, there's six pins used now. We added the bottom three. So the bottom two pins are to run an LED that tells you that your fog lights are on. And there is a resistor in here. And then the next pin goes to the switch. And that turns your fog lights on. And then we have ground. And then there's a, the next pin is this light, I guess, which is your cargo light i think i'm not sure really what that does it must light up this little maybe I, it might light this little do you think yeah but yeah so you got your first two is the led then you have um to turn your fog lights on then you have your main i guess it's not ground it's 12 volts then the next pin is this LED, and then the last pin is your cargo light. So technically, if you wanted to, you could drill more holes in here, get rid of some of this copper, and then you could put another pin in here and add a push button um, below this for your fog lights, just to draw in drill a momentary push button in here and you could even add an led for a status indicator if you wanted to but these things are like what 20 bucks off a of rock auto so it's probably not worth it but just thought it was interesting that's how the pin out works if anybody wants to know and these are different between an 05 and an 02 because i tried to pull the one out of that truck and it's different so my guess is 03 to 07 is probably the same and 99 to 02 is probably the same. It's a little disappointing because I can't quite make this do what I was hoping I was going to be able to. But the way this works is all your, your light switch, your high beam switch, and your fog light switch all tell the body control module what to do. And then it is actually what's turning the lights on. I have pinouts and a diagram in the description, probably on GitLab, that you can look at uh, for the rest of these wires. But let's start with high beams. So these three wires right here coming in the back, if you can see that, the top one is uh, power into the switch. And then the 03 to 07, as far as I'm aware, uh, you push the lever forward for high beams and pull it back for momentary um, flash to pass, they call it. The earlier ones, I think um, it's just momentary back, toggles them on, toggles them off. So this is probably a little bit different on the earlier trucks. But the it's really hard to see, but the bottom one is green with a black stripe, light green with a black stripe. And it connects the top and bottom one when the lever is front. And it connects the top and middle one, which is yellow, with, I'm not sure if it has a stripe or not, so the top and middle one, when you pull the lever back for flash to pass, the important part about that is that if you push it front, it will turn your low beams off. If you pull it back, it won't. It will turn your fog lights off. So what I was hoping 
is that it wouldn't turn my fog lights off and then I could just use normal fog light control here but that's not the case but you can still rewire that if you want this module goes up in under the dash like this but if you pull it out it's a here or sorry one here going down to whatever the highest number is here it has two lines you have a and you have b i printed this toggle switch holder to clip in here instead of this little cubby hole thing on a four-wheel drive truck if you have electric four-wheel drive your four-wheel drive buttons would be here so this wouldn't work but this just clips in place and it gives me a spot for some toggle switches for the driving light delete i cut these plugs off of the donor truck harness this is the uh, parking light turn signal socket goes here and this is your driving light socket so we're eliminating this and you're just gonna cut these wires here somewhere splice these on to both of them just match the colors so you have two sockets here i did so over here non-insulated crimps and then glue heat shrink works really good and if you feel like it you can put a little bit of electro grease on the ends of the wires before you put them in the crimp that'll help keep them from corroding splice that on here and this does not fit in this socket perfectly but it does work like these little nubbins are a little bit different so it's going to be the opposite orientation so it's going to be this way and you kind of have to put one side in first like it doesn't quite line up so you got to put two of the notches in first it's a little bit finicky but you can get it two of the notches in first and then you spin it a little bit and you can get the third notch in and just kind of latches so there's the on do i have that one in backwards or something dumb this socket was a little corroded and the bulb wasn't getting good connection that's why it was dim but there we go looks a little off now that i have different colors but whatever the key has to be on for the turn signal to work um okay four ways are fine but for the turn signals I need to figure out what to do to keep it from rapid flashing. I think you can put a resistor in or something somewhere. I got the LED turn signal flasher, so I don't have hyper flash. So this thing is down here. So you, if you have an automatic, turn the key on, put it, put your gear shifter lever all the way down, put your steering wheel down. Then this thing just kind of snaps in. You just grab it, pull it out a couple places. It'll snap off. You kind of rotate it out. And then this bottom piece, two seven millimeter bolts there and there. And then it kind of gets stuck in this corner, but you kind of just lift it out. That comes off. And then this thing, your, I took the old one out already, but your flasher relay is awkward spot right here. We've got four rays on. Just press that in there. Try turn signal. Beautiful. I thought I'd go over here how the six high mod works because it's not very well documented exactly what they're doing. They just kind of shove diodes and um, blades of relays and it kind of just works. But these relays, um, they're switching ground. So this is your switched side of the relay. And I think they do it like this because you can put the relay in either direction and it's the same. So you're like, it's diagonal corners. So this is your load. This is the, the light or whatever that you're switching. And this is your coil that's um, operating the relay. So they have 12 volts always on this side. And this side, they switch between 12 volts and ground. So normally this is 12 volts or either 12 volts are not connected to anything. 
and when you s connect this to ground it turns the relay on so what people usually do um yeah the the pin numbers are here 86 30 85 and 87 you can see in that relay so what people usually do is they connect this pin of the high beam relay to like the 85 pin of the high beam relay to the 85 pin of these relays as far as i can tell this is what they do and it i did it, it seemed like that worked um you put the the gray band of the diode or the negative side of the diode toward the high beam relay and then basically what happens is when this is pulled low to turn your high beams on it also pulls these low and all your lights come on so people say oh it's a fire hazard or whatever from my understanding and i'm could be wrong in this but from my understanding they're just using a pull-up resistor in the body control module to pull this high so the pull-up resistor is still active if the body control module pulls it low so it's no different than just turning the relay on it's the way they're turning the relay on you're just turning it on at the same time as the high beams and it's not putting extra load on your high beams because it's just signal i mean it's negligible extra load on the signal pin of the high beams your fuses all are still all still correspond to the the relay that they're attached to if that makes any sense hopefully i helped somebody at least with that long explanation so over here there's this line coming off of the throttle body and i couldn't figure out where this goes i thought it was a vacuum line you can see on the old throttle body it comes across here and it didn't appear to have vacuum ports or anything on the inside so I did some research and I found out that that's the steam line. So in the older small block Chevys, they had the thermostat on the top of the engine. So air, trapped air in the engine wasn't a problem. It all just came out the thermostat and went into the radiator and got vented. So with the LS engines, because the thermostat is down here, right behind that, it's like halfway down the engine. So you get trapped steam at the top of the heads. So there's ports on the heads two ports per head it's really hard to see but it's right here um on either side front and back the back ones are capped off because it's tilted front i think they did that so that you can interchange the heads it's the same because the ports on the front and back it makes the heads the same so then these two ports are teed together then they come up to the throttle body which i think they use that to heat up the throttle body and the cold I'm not sure exactly what that does. Don't quote me on that. But then it comes across to here. And on the 5.3 trucks, the radiator has a bung, like right there, similar to this, but quarter inch, that this hose comes around here and hooks into so that any steam that comes off the top of the engine can just go over there into the radiator and it's fine. Well, I don't have that port because I used the radiator from the 4.3. So this hose... The easiest thing to do with this hose, you can do a couple things with it. You basically just have to hook it to the cooling system somehow. Some people tap into the water pump somewhere. Um, or you can, the top radiator hose, you can get a kit that has a, like a fitting that has a threaded port that you can hook this into that. But the easiest thing to do about is just get a T. You need it to be half inch T reducing down to quarter inch coming out the side. And then you can just hook this in to your upper overflow line somewhere which unfortunately I didn't find out till now and I'm waiting on the fitting here's our fittings so this guy just goes in here somewhere the hose off of the throttle body goes in there so half inch and quarter inch kind of an odd fitting yeah you know, it's teed in just runs over there these I didn't get them yet, but for the uh, mechanical throttle body, they have one of the inserts in, but they don't have the other two. So I ordered some 5 16th inserts that should go in there. These inserts are really big for the size hole it is. It's an M6. An M, like a normal, I cannot find an M6 insert that is 
big enough to fit in these holes. It's a nine and a half mil or like three eighth about hole. So I can't find any inserts that will work with these that are M6. So what other people were doing is just getting a 5 16th brass insert. And then I don't, um, you might have to drill these out. It's amazing how good one bolt actually does work there, but I got my inserts. So we're gonna try and put some 5 16th bolts in there. Okay, let's see if these things work. I imagine I have to hammer them in. I think they go this way. Do I want it to be sub flush? If I throw a bolt in, just a little bit. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, you can't even see it, sorry. Just like that, that's what we want. The idea behind these is this ledge here, this flat part is the diameter of the hole. And then this neural part, like the neural sticks up just a little bit from this. So when you hammer it in, it has to squeeze together here to fit in the hole. And then when you thread the bolt in, it expands again, and the bolt forces it out against the side of the hole and it can't pull out. So, I mean, they're not rated for like a ton of force, but we're just holding on a throttle cable, so it doesn't matter. That worked really well, actually. No complaints about that. Now I can put my cover on the top here. That means it's done, right? When you put the cover on top, the project's done. Yeah, that's better. So when I hooked in the throttle position sensor, there was a black and a gray wire that I was thinking was the pedal position sensor, and I didn't need them anymore. Turns out it's actually the oil pressure sensor. Um, but it's a little interesting because when I hooked it up, like I unhooked them and then I hooked in the oil pressure sensor again and didn't hook in the throttle position sensor. So the throttle position sensor wasn't working. So I fixed that. I thought I just had the wrong wires hooked up, which I did, but then I unhooked the other ones and didn't have oil pressure. And it turns out that those wires were to the oil pressure sensor, not the pedal position sensor, which makes sense. I just wasn't thinking. I put about 200 miles in this thing now with no issues, so hopefully I have all the bugs worked out of it. It's definitely not done. I have the headliner out currently. That needs redone, and there's a couple other bits and bobs that need finished yet. There's some trim on the other side I need to take off, but yeah, I'll keep driving it and we'll see how it works.